Welcome to Swarf and Chips. Coming up on today's show, Mark visits NCMT and looks at the world's fastest wire EDM. I visit Midlands Precision to talk about cost-effective collection systems for turned parts. Mark also takes a trip to Granger and Worrell and discusses the importance and science behind lubricants and cutting fluids. And finally, I visit Air Accessories in Sheffield to find out more about a career as a programmer. So welcome to the show. Right, let's start the show. Let's head over to NCMT and talk EDM. Well, one thing we like on Swarf and Chips is world premieres. Now, I'm here with Scott from NCMT. Now, Scott, this fantastic Makino wire machine, the U6 Heat, you're telling me this is the fastest machine in the world. Now, I, I saw a debut uh, at Emo, but this effectively is the first machine in the UK, and I believe it's going to be on your stand at Mac. Yes. Uh, machine we have here is the U6 Heat Extreme machine, okay? So, uh, not only standard wire uh, point, point 0.1 up to 0.25, you also get an option to run with 0.4 wire. 0.4 wire allowing you to get those extra cutting speeds that you might be required in certain, obviously, uh, different uh, aerospace industries, automotive. Um, the 0.4 wire actually is, is uh, able to run with such high power because uh, of an additional power booster that's on the side of the machine, but also combine that with the heat technology on the U6, uh, coming from your two high pressure flushing pumps uh, that we have on a standard U6 heat machine but also on our U6 heat extreme machine okay it offers that allowance to get more flushing more cool into the wire therefore you can push the wire a little bit more put more amps through the wire uh, and obviously they're giving us two to three times faster cutting speeds and the type of customer that this would appeal to who would they be uh, looking at the moment, we've got a, a good opportunity in the aerospace industry cutting the fir tree on, uh, on the, uh, the engine blisks. Okay, uh, what that allows us to do is eliminate what are usually costly broaching processes. Uh, so automotive, one, two cut strategies that, that no, don't necessarily require the, the most accurate, but, uh, but we really do need to get a bit of speed. Slicing jobs up for for internal inspection. Uh, sometimes it can take quite a while to get the wire through on a, on a, on a standard, but with a 0.4 wire, that goes away. Well, I mean, that says it all, I think. I think aerospace is very key in the UK. Obviously, I think you're going to do very well at Mac, but that just shows you we're all about world premiers here at Swarf and Chips. Gents, right, okay, I've got a couple of questions for you. Oh. EDM, wire machines. Do you know what EDM stands for? <clears throat> Electrical discharge machining, just yeah. thrown out there. <laughs> yeah. who, who doesn't know that, Colin? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. But my question is, EDM then, Colin, why do I use an EDM machine? Uh, difficult materials, uh, thin walls. If you're going into a corner, maybe, try and get some tooling there. EDM holes. profile, well, yeah, internal holes. Well, like basically that. use one because you can't do it on a machine tool sometimes, you know, yep. or, or the operations. Uh, I mean, the lovely, th lovely thing about uh, Scott, he, he's been in the industry for a long, long time and his EDM knowledge is fantastic. Yep. And he heads up the EDM department at NCMT. And Makino, if you don't really know what a Makino machine is from a grinding point of view or machine, machining centre point of view, EDM, they're, they're, they're absolutely superb machines, but very high, high end. High end. So what's the benefits of having the fastest? It's quicker. Mater yeah, material, <laughs> material uh, removal rate, basically. But did, I mean, you're gonna, there's a slight compromise on the accuracy there, but I'm, I'm assuming, because EDMs are super accurate anyways, so I'm assuming yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's going to be yeah, and also uh, when you look at the machine as well, it, it, it looks a well-structured machine, it, mm. very well built, but also the touch screen is fantastic yeah. on them as well. And it, it's like a, having a doctor. So therefore, if, you, if you, you need to know something, you just press a button, it tells you exactly what you need to do next. I've got a couple of questions. Can it do different, I mean, most of the EDM machines do, can do different, so almost like five axis cutting. I'm assuming They've got the kit mirror on it, haven't they? Yeah. No, or, not the actual or, machine, the, actual, the, oh. EDM, the, EDM, the wire. I'm uh, assuming they will do. Well, they, they, they do a lot of bespoke uh, EDM machines yeah. where, like, like Lindsay, because you, you was with me on this visit, yeah. wasn't you? Oh, okay. And uh, the Kitamira, they, they've got they've got a head that effectively will move the part. Move the part. I apologise, Lindsay. I came That's OK, step. Colin. Don't worry about it. Next question. OK. Uh, <laughs> fast hole drilling, sink. Yeah, they do sink um, machines yeah. as well. But, uh, you know, specifically, we was talking about the world's yeah, uh, fastest yeah. machine. Fastest, you know, obviously, yeah. it's got... 
uh, more power, you know, a bigger wire effectively. And, and they, they yeah. will sell those machines in, in, in the yep. UK, definitely. Yeah. Application specific. And they've got different varieties. So. They've got the U6 and then they've got the U6 Heat Extreme. But speak to NCMT about that. And the showroom's and who's fantastic, it? isn't it? Scott, is it? Did you yes, say? Yeah. Scott, it's brilliant. It, how, how good is their showroom? Oh, it's amazing. I, I was really impressed with the showroom, actually. So, um, yeah. yeah, anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> um, lots to come. Right, so coming up, we still have a video on a day in the life of a keen machinist into programmer. And we've got Mark's trip to Granger and Worrell. But first, I visited Midlands Precision. We're here at Midland Precision. And Will, hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> and so why am I asking you this? Just the, the equipment we've invested in in the second time we've started the business up. So we've, we've gone for the road to rack. Previously, we, we, we never had a... When we unloaded the parts, they'd drop into a basket, they'd all hit each other and you, you run the risk of damaging parts so we knew we had that problem previously so when I was setting up I thought right we do everything properly we eliminate the problems we previously had get it right first time or really in this case get it right second time yes <laughs> so with this your parts never actually land on top of each other your customers parts never get dinted or damaged you as you can see on there the, the parts don't hit each other but it's a form of automation as well so how does it help you on that side of things well, we can leave the machine running for longer now because these parts aren't getting damaged. You, you can see how many you can get stacked up on there. That gives you unmanned hours for production. But everyone benefits, don't they? Well, there you have it. Another variety of automation here, giving you that little peace of mind. Rotorac from Hydrofeed. You know, I'm seeing a lot of these in the industry. I think out of five companies that I visited the other day, well, the other day, mm. over the past uh, few weeks, I'd say two. Yeah, of, uh, two so of the, around 40%. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell he used to be a banker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? Sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we had this discussion as well off, off camera or whatever. I don't think we see enough of these. Uh, you know, you, yeah. the engineer's got the boxes at the end and it's dropping in and stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Generally, I only see them with a the newer investment, though. Yeah. I, that's what I find with the rotor axis. Yeah. I, there's a lot of, you know, we're very strong on term parts in, in, in the UK. And, yeah. and uh, there's, an, you know, there's only a handful of machines that are sold in the UK, not... Uh, you know, one of one of them is yours customers, for instance, is and they got star. So, so, so you know, a, a lot of these guys are actually churning out parts on a regular basis. So, mm. with that in mind, you know, what what a great system to actually use to avoid any damage. Yeah, I, I think it they're is. brilliant. Can I say? I, no. I know I've mentioned this. Please oh, don't. Oh. No, go on. Oh, um, I've been to a uh, company before, and you've already seen it. But the gentleman actually used his grandson's uh, <laughs> like netted like toy that you'd like fish out of the um, bath ducks, mm. and he used that and attached it because the parts. Still had the duck stuck, in it. He still had the duck on it, probably. But he he had that because you're engineers, you you make everything, don't you? And because the conveyor system, because the parts are so small coming off the conveyor system, it was the only way where he could really catch mm. them and they not get stuck. Right. So you know what? Please, please go on. I, well, no, the Hydrofeed, that road yeah. track, we are out at Vision Engineering in Woking the other day. Mm. Cracking, absolutely fantastic machine shop. But Hydrofeed have actually made them a bespoke uh, oh, parts wow. catcher. It was brilliant. Right, okay. And it would switch between, it'll have oil bars at the end, it drop the parts in and switch over what it's for. It was, basically, it. the video is coming soon, but it's brilliant. And that's, why, that's, that's why the subcontracted market's really dynamic, isn't it? Because if, if you find a way to actually make something to it's help your process, won't you? Yeah. It's engineers yeah. all over, isn't it? it it's brilliant. If there's a problem, they, they'll make a solution. Yeah. Well, please get in touch and let us know if you use similar devices for collection. I mean, imagine all of the pictures that we could get in of people uh, creating Ooh, and engineering. Not too many, because poor old Gina will go mental. Our social media girl, <laughs> she'll have pictures coming out of left and centre. Well, we'd love, we'd genuinely, we'd love to hear from you, all of your parts, catches and anything. Um, now, it's time to visit Granger and Worrell with Gemtech, who supply them with Blaser Swiss Lube. I'm here at Granger and Worrell. They're very, very well known to work at the high-end machining side in the automotive sector, but they do do other work. And what I want to talk about with Mark here is talking about they've got the best machines, but also you've got to spend really good money to get lubricant. Now, tell me why you actually work with Gemtech, who supply Blaza, because I know Blaza is one of the most expensive lubricants in the marketplace. Yeah, it certainly isn't cheap. They don't profess to be cheap, though. Uh, we've used other products in the past. The Blaza's twice the price, but we use half as much. Uh, it is a very high-end product in terms of lubricity, uh, so it does help us get the work right, which is always what we aim to do. Um, but it also gives us an advantage being a, a bioconcept product as well. So explain what bioconcept is. 
Okay, so bioconcept uh, relates to the way that the fluid controls bacteria growth, i.e. stops the bacteria growing. So instead of using biocides, uh, it uses a, a, a dominant bacteria um, that is not harmful to humans. So I'm sure Darren from Gemtech can tell you a bit more about that. And, and lastly, when you invest in the best machine tools, the strategies, is lubricants one of the biggest part of that sort of jigsaw? It's certainly one of the pieces in the puzzle, yeah. So what we're trying to do is take out the variables. So good quality machines, good quality environment, good quality cutting tools supported by a good quality oil, supported by a good quality supplier as well that can help us if there are any issues. Great, thanks Mark. Well that just shows you lubricants is as important as the best machine tools in the world. I think, well, that's a big statement there because people don't normally want to say, well, it's a really expensive product. Mm. So if you could just cover off that. And also, Granger Wall, just people who are out there don't know what they actually do. Well, Granger Wall are very well known for uh, the automotive sector. Right. So with that in mind, uh, they're, they're making a lot of engine blocks, let's say, for lots of different manufacturers that I can't mention. Uh, it's quite, <laughs> Is that because you've forgotten? Uh, well, probably it could be, yeah. Um, but the way that Mark has actually laid his machine uh, tool shop out oh. is fantastic. It, it's very, you know, one section is doing a certain part, and the whole process is very is very much. I'm buying the best um, machine tools. Okay, I've got one go with a casting, so mm. I've got to get it right. Yep. So therefore, for his philosophy: best machine tools, best tooling, best machining strategies, best lubricant to support that. Got gotcha. yeah. So that they were Matsura there, and uh, Mazax. Yeah, Mas mm. but why would you, yeah why would you have those with putting bloody chip fat oil in it. I mean, that's a bit extreme. But. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all about, um, you know, making it cost effective yeah, for them, but they also know that their customers' products are going to go pack exactly how they expect yeah. it. Mark, is it really the most expensive when you're using half, you know, when yeah. you think about yeah. it, that's so questionable. But you've got to get around that mindset, oh, that's really expensive, yeah. I'll go to cheap. Well, it, it, yeah. it's, protect, it's protecting you as, as, the, as the engineer, let's say, for your customer's benefit. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. I've learned a lot over the years about Ge uh, Gemtech and why they supply Blaza. I've been to Blaza mm. and the amount of money they actually spend on R&D is fantastic. But yeah. the whole yeah. point is the, the lubricants are there to solve a solution, yeah. literally. Yeah. Well, so, a lubricant, yeah, that's cool in there. I mentioned as in lubricant. But another thing, though, is you buy these machines and the people, we, we go on about this quite a bit. It's mm. the whole package. So you've got the tool holders, the tooling, the software, mm. the bar feeds. I mean, I'll say that bar feeds, but your mm. zero point systems. That's an integral part of the whole package. And, and that's why companies like uh, Gemtech thrive because yeah. because they're technical sales guys. You know, they, they've got the knowledge and say, well, I've got I've got this part, but it's the surface finish is very good on it. You know, is it is it the tool? Well, no, it's not the tool actually. That's and that, fascinating. And Granger and Warren actually um, ruled out that it wasn't the lubricant was the problem when they used it was the, the I think it was something to do with the machine strategy or the tool. Right, but okay. because they found that was the best solution, that's why they stuck with Blast. And I think Gemtech. that's brilliant. You know what? Okay. All I can say is just speak to Gemtech regarding the, your lubricants or, or, yeah. a, or any other. There's lots of brands out there. But if you want to know more of the science behind it, I think that's well, they, really, really they're important. They're the experts, aren't they? And there is a lot of science behind it. Which yeah, very much so. Yep. Okay, so a great example of getting what you pay for. Now, finally, <laughs> I visit Air Accessories and speak to a very proud programmer. I'm here at Air Accessories in Sheffield, and this is Clive Glossop, who is a CNC programmer. He has been in this industry for 15 years. So we're gonna be finding out why you got into the industry and what you enjoy about it. So where did it all begin? Uh, I started uh, my apprenticeship um, at a company actually that my uncle managed. That's what got me into it. He, he offered to give me an apprenticeship, um, started the apprenticeship, and that's where I fell in love with CNC. Once I, once I did started my course, and seeing what CNCs could do, that's where it went from there. So what were you doing on your apprenticeship? What was like the day-to-day -day life and, and what was it about the industry that kind of took your fancy? Uh, it, was, it was seeing a finished product from what you've done, from what you've programmed, from the effort you've put in and from a blank canvas to getting a finished product. Mm. It just, it draws you in. Mm. My favourite programme is that a lot of people know, I tell them all the time, how it's made and I absolutely am fascinated to see the creativity that goes into making parts and I admire anyone who can do what you do. So what was the next step then? You went on apprenticeship, what was the next stage? It was just following the CNC route basically. It was the company I was at at the time unfortunately didn't have a great amount of CNC 
uh, but that was the route I wanted to follow. So I had to, I had to move on and, uh, and progress in that sense. So did you start on manual machines? What was that? It was a bit of a learning curve. Yeah, I started manual, which I would imagine most apprenticeships, you're going to start manual. Um, but then they push you on to CNC. Manuals, they're not dying, they're not dead, but... No. But yeah, they're, they're not as advanced as obviously CNCs are. So yeah. So you got to know the basics, of yeah. course. And then the next stage, you went out there, you got work? Yes, I did, yeah. I, um, I just, like I said, the company I was at at the time, they, they didn't have many CNC and they didn't really want to push that route because it, it didn't suit them. No. Um, so I just had to go out and move on and find somewhere that I could chase what I wanted to do. So, so what do you now love about what you do? Because you've climbed up the, st the stages. Yeah, as I say, it's, it's seeing a finished part from the work you've put in, from the programming you've done, putting into practice what you've learned over the years to see a finished product that you know is going to be of good use to somebody or something. And just to finish up, anyone who's looking to get into this industry, what would you suggest? Go for it, definitely. You'll not regret it. I love it. hearing stories like this. I do. It's someone who is... And I know when we met, um, we met with Tom Scavala and Rob Hewitt, uh, JKP Engineering, the fact that they just say, look, I can make, I can make this. I can make this. Well, they haven't this. got 3D printer, Lindsay. Well, no, no, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, no, I can make this, you know, and, and they get to make it. And I think we just have that expectation. Mm. When I explain to everyone about what we do and who we speak to, I find it's, that it's fascinating when I go, look around, all of this is made. We haven't made it. These it machinists, is, I, programmers I, I, have, and that just blows I think I think when we you know, set out with MTD CNC, it's not just because we're passionate, we've been in the industry, uh, but it's also, there is a massive skill shortage. Yep. Why not show engineering to be sexy? It's not yeah. a grubby environment. There's gonna be loads of jobs in it at the end of the day. What, and, and look at that guy. I mean, I mean look how sexy you are. And you're in the oh, industry. Oh, please stop you <laughs> And okay. you, well, I'm not talking is about it, you yet. Is that probably. a backhanded compliment? No. <laughs> anyway, can I, I just wanna clarify as well, you didn't see on here, Lindsay, consummate professional, yeah. blooper, started off the video. Right, we're here, Air Industries, Air Product. Air, Air Accessories. Thank you, I'll get, get their name, that's my yeah. blooper. And we are up in, I don't know where we are. I did, and I did. And before that, she prefaced it by saying, we're doing this in one take. <laughs> I did, I said, we're gonna Sorry, do it in one take. We're at Air Accessories in, where are we again? I think it's <laughs> in Derby, originally. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. But getting back to the thing, big skills gap, apprentices, getting decent apprentices yeah. as well. Yeah, I, it's, as I say, you, you've got machines, you know, best machines, Prismatic engineers in the UK, look at the F1 uh, teams that are here, you know, look at what we're great at aerospace, you know, for, for any, you know, young engineers looking at this or, you know, young learners, you know, get involved. Get involved, try yeah. it, be creative, because not every yeah. single day is exactly the same either. Thanks, guys. That's, Thanks that's, very gone, much. that's gone always quick. a pleasure for you. Yeah, it has. It, it's really nice to see such a variety of machines and products and visit and see interesting engineering companies Absolutely. as well as yeah. what they're doing so um, and the yeah. in the investment as well that's that's a great thing with the UK you know we're investing mm -hmm. to get the best work you know to, to keep yeah. to keep growing the business yeah. and keep us all in work so yeah. all right that's it from us don't forget our podcasts our monthly shows and all of the exciting updates that we keep bringing you um, if you have a cycle time challenge that you'd want to send in to us we'd love to feature that on the show and also as we mentioned earlier if you've got any um, parts collection any things that you've been created with send them in to us thanks gents what do we always say at the end of the show goodbye sharp lindsay I know, I know. <laughs> that yeah. one. Oh, yes, that one, Colin. <laughs> Keep those spindles turning. <laughs>